Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my show about whitewater things. And today I want to talk about this mnemonic clap. I think it's a mnemonic. It's where the first letter spells something and you just call it clap, for example. And I get asked a lot, like, Zach, how do I become more safer on the river? And I'm sure a lot of you have too. You've heard a ton. How do I get to be safer? And a common answer is take a rescue class. And I'm not sure if I agree with that completely. I mean, it can't really hurt, I don't think, to take a rescue class. But to be safer, we want to avoid problems and just be more responsible to avoid issues. And the idea of CLAP was first introduced in this book, Whitewater Safety and Rescue by Franco Ferraro. It's my personal Bible when, I wanna, when I'm teaching. I kind of refer back to this. I think it's a good to have as a base information. I really like this book. And the first chapter is about CLAP. And so I want to talk about, about it a little bit here. This stuff's pretty obvious, but I want to go through it because I think it's just good to talk about. Uh, the first... The C, in, the C in CLAP is communication. And this could be a very broad topic, but this really comes down to having good river signals and communication with the people you boat with. And I think a lot of times kayakers have different signals than rafters. Uh, Colorado has different signals than Oregon. Uh, the, the rest of the world has different signals. So everywhere you go, the hand signals and even audio signals, the whistle signals we use, can be different. So getting into agreement about communication so we don't have miscommunications on the river or in a rescue situation. That's a big one. Next is line of sight. And line of sight it has two, two meanings here. One, when you're running a rapid, if you can't see everything down along the way to know that it's clear of wood or obstacles or dangers, then you scout. You wanna have, if you're the first boat, you wanna have line of sight down to make sure the path is clear. Or even if you're the second boat, you need to see the first boat who then communicates back that it's good. So having line of sight when you're entering rapids is key, but you also wanna maintain line of sight between the boats you're with. And so you may, the first boat may not see the sixth boat. We would like that, but every boat should have line of sight and we should be continually making sure that we have line of sight as a group so we can look out for each other and handle an emergency. Uh, next is avoidance. And the idea is let's avoid problems instead of solving them later. And so the cure is rescue, like whitewater rescue, swiftwater rescue is the cure, but let's try to avoid problems. And we can avoid problems by just having a good team, people that work well together and are practiced, uh, by being properly prepared, bringing all the things that we need to bring. Uh, another thing is just having clean lines, following the clean land principle, not having stuck our hands, stuff our hands can get stuck in or our leg can get stuck in or just having dangerous lines around the boat. And also just, just assessing risks really well. So. I'm a big fan of avoidance. If you ask me, Zach, how can I be safer? My answer is let's not get into those problems. Let's learn what the problems are and assess the risk and avoid the problems that we can definitely avoid. Uh, and the final part of this mnemonic, I think mnemonic's the right word is P for position, uh, but I'm gonna call this position of maximum usefulness. Uh, when you're boating, you wanna put yourself in the most useful spot, especially when you're setting safety for others on a rapid. So this could mean uh, that doesn't always mean like the, put yourself by the most dangerous thing. I'm going to say you want to put yourself in a way to uh, mitigate the riskiest thing. So maybe there's something that's less dangerous, but it's way more likely to happen. Position yourself there. So where do you position yourself as a safety boater or as a boat or within the group or a throw bag on shore? You want to be positioned to help others in the riskiest spot, not necessarily the most dangerous spot. Now the most dangerous spot may be the riskiest spot, but if there's a one in a thousand chance they go to the most dangerous spot and a one in five chance they go to the second most dangerous spot, well then you might assess the risk and put yourself in the most useful spot by the second most dangerous thing. So those are some quick thoughts. Again, this is CLAP. This could have been an hour long talk. Each of these can be broken up into more, but I think there's some good principles to think about when we're, when we're boating together safely. And just to reiterate them to end up, communication is crucial. Like, and telling people or talking to people before you go so you have common communication is important. Line of sight, down rapids, and also between boats is critical. Avoiding the things we can avoid, this seems like a no-brainer to me. And then putting yourself in the most useful spot. So those are my thoughts. If you have things to add, questions, experiences, I love the comments. Please add them in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe. I really appreciate all of you that like the, like these videos and subscribe. And uh, yep, that's it for this episode. See you next time. Thanks.